In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the knock sensor on your Toyota Tundra. Remove the two 10 millimeter nuts for this plastic engine cover. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt for the AC line. Loosen the 10 millimeter bolt on the intake clamp. Do the same on this side. And remove the intake. Pull the clamp back and pull this vacuum hose off. Using a trim tool, we're going to remove this plastic connector for the MAF out of the intake box. We're going to pull the vacuum hose line off and we're going to remove the PCV hose. Then we're going to remove our plastic intake. Pull the clamp back on this vacuum hose, pull it off the intake, put that down to the side out of the way. We're going to remove the two 12 millimeter bolts and the two 12 millimeter nuts for the throttle body. And there's one more on this bottom right side. You can take the throttle body off without removing this connector. However, we are going to do it. Push on this little tab and pull back. And it's just going to give us more room to swing this over out of the way for while we're working on this. I'm going to take the gasket off as well. Pull the hose off, pinch this connector on top and pull it out and remove that. It's going to make it so this harness swings over farther. Remove the 12 millimeter bolt. We're going to flop all of this over to the side out of the way. I'm going to put this bolt back in here just to hold it while I'm working. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt for this harness bracket. Flop that to the side. I'm going to put that bolt back in just to hold it while I'm working. Remove the clamp on the brake booster vacuum hose. Pull that line off and tuck it to the side. Using a pair of pliers, squeeze on the back of this clip, push the two pins together. Push the little plastic clip out. That will allow this harness to flop a little bit more, give you a little more room. I'm going to pull this PCV hose off and pull it up. That was connected to the throttle body. This is going to give us more area to be able to get into and take off the connectors for the injectors. Remove the fuel injector connectors. I'm going to use a pair of long needle nose pliers, do a little tab on the bottom that you push on and then pull straight up. There's going to be four on each side. Using a 10 millimeter wrench or socket, we're going to loosen the negative and the positive cable. Remove the negative and then the positive. Do the same thing on the other side. Push that tab up right there and then you're able to pull this harness off of that bracket. Just like that. Give you a little bit more room to work in here.
If you're using a pair of pliers on these connectors, be careful. They can be brittle and break easily. Just be gentle and careful when you're doing it. There's two 12 millimeter nuts and three 12 millimeter bolts on each side holding the intake. The two nuts are in front and the rear. I'm gonna go around loosening all of these bolts and nuts. I'm going to use a magnet while doing this to grab the nuts and the bolts. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to lift the intake straight up and flop it to the side. I put this pad down so it has a nice square place to sit. And also it's covering the positive terminal so nothing can arc out. So I have the intake off the studs and up. I'm going to pull it this way to have the gas lines pull under the harness, and then we're going to flop it up over on its back. Just like that. Using a vacuum, I'm going to clean up all of the debris inside of this valley and around our cylinders. Push the little button on the side of the starter connector right here and pull that out. We're going to remove the knock sensor connector, just like that. Push on this little tab and pull up. On the bottom of this right here, there's a little tab that you can push down on towards the block and then pull it towards you. That's that little tab right there. And I'm also going to take the connector off the other knock sensor. If you end up using pliers on these, be very careful. Took that all off just to give myself some extra room with the harness. Using a 27 millimeter socket. Remove the knock sensor. Install the new knock sensor. Torque the knock sensor to 15 foot pounds. Install the connector for the starter. 
push until you hear a click. If you don't hear a click, give it a pull. Make sure it's securely in there. Install the knock sensor connectors. Push until you hear a click. If you don't hear a click, give it a pull. Make sure it's securely on there. Reattach this harness connector. Just push it on. Clean the mating surface on the intake manifold. This one's already clean. We're going to shove some rags in the holes so we don't get any dirt inside of our intake. Using a razor blade, carbide scraper, or light abrasive, go through and clean the mating surface. When you're doing this, try to scrape away from the ports. When the mating surface is clean, remove your rags. Take a clean rag with a bit of parts cleaner. And wipe down the mating surfaces. With your mating surfaces nice and clean, install the intake. and drop it on. Using a magnet to help, I'm gonna install the two nuts and three bolts onto the intake. And I'm just getting these started with the magnet. Do the same thing on the other side. Go around and hand tighten the four nuts and the six bolts on the intake. And then we're going to torque them to 13 foot pounds. In multiple passes, we're going to torque the nuts and the bolts down to 13 foot-pounds. On this first pass, I'm not bringing it all the way to 13 foot-pounds. I'm going to about 11 to 12. And then on our second pass, I'm going to go all the way to 13. Install the injector connectors, there's four on each side. Push until you hear a click.
On this side, we're going to reinstall the harness back onto these little brackets right here. Just like that. And then do the same thing on the other side. Reinstall this plastic connector into the hook for the harness. And take this bolt back out, put our bracket down, and reinstall the bolt. Snug that down. Reinstall the hose from the booster to this line. Using a pair of pliers, move the clamp back into position. Pull your harness back over. And reinstall the bolt. Reinstall the connector. Push until it clicks in. Snug this bolt down. Reinstall this hose. Pull the clamp back into position. You had a stud come out when you took off the throttle body. Remove the nut from the stud and reinstall it. Using a stud installer, we're going to tighten this down. Install the throttle body gasket. Reinstall the throttle body. Install the two bolts and the two nuts and snug those down. Torque the throttle body nuts and bolts to 66 inch pounds. Reinstall the connector. Push until you hear a click. This vacuum hose popped off, so we're going to push it back on, just like that. Reinstall the vacuum hose to the top of the intake. Put the clamp back on. Reinstall the intake. Tighten down the clamps. Reinstall the plastic clip for the MAF sensor. Grab this vacuum hose, slip it back on, put the clamp back on, reinstall the little vacuum hose onto the back of the plastic intake. Reinstall this PCV hose. This popped off on us during our removal, so we just left it off. Reinstall the bolt for the AC line bracket. Reinstall the plastic engine cover. and put on the two nuts and snug them down. Install the positive cable and then the negative and then tighten them down.
When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.